Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to apply conditional formatting to your pivot tables. So this is a bit different than applying conditional formatting to regular ranges and it's important to understand how it works. So let's look at an example. Uh, here we have a regular pivot table and we're going to go ahead and apply conditional formatting. So just select any cell inside the pivot table in the values area and then we're going to go to the home tab, the conditional formatting button here and for this we'll do a top 10 items format and we'll just choose or select top three and then we'll apply a green fill and go ahead and click OK. So that's applied the conditional formatting to this single cell here and you'll also notice that right here we have this little button up here called formatting options and clicking that uh, shows us or allows us to apply the formatting rule to and then a specific range. So either it's the selected cells all cells uh, showing sum of revenue or all cells showing sum of revenue for product. So if we select this first item here, that's going to apply our conditional formatting and include the grand total row or column. And sometimes we don't want that, so we can go back and change this to all cells showing sum of revenue for the product field only. And if we click that, that will exclude the grand total row and just apply the formatting here within the values area. And the nice part about this is, is as the pivot table changes, the conditional formatting will be reapplied to the cells. Uh, so for example, if we were to click this slicer here to slice our pivot table for the north region instead, of course our data changes here. We actually have more rows in our pivot table now. The conditional formatting automatically reapplies to just those cells in the values area here and still excludes that grand total row. Now, once you make any changes here to the sheet, that formatting options button will disappear and that's fine. We can get it back. Again, we'll go to the conditional formatting menu, manage rules, and then we'll select our rule here and hit edit. And then you'll see right here at the top of the window, we have those rules for where we can apply it. So if we did want to include our grand total rows or subtotals, we could uh, select this here and then hit OK and then you can hit the apply button and you can see that that's made that change there. Now I don't want that so I'm going to go edit the rule and again change it back right here, hit OK and then hit OK or apply and that will apply my formatting. Now this can get a bit trickier when you have multiple fields in the pivot table like this example here. So here we have the region field, we also have the product field and then quarters in the columns area. So let's go ahead and start by just selecting a single cell again and we'll go through that same process. Conditional formatting, top 10. This time we'll leave it at top 10 and we'll again we'll change that to green and then hit OK. And we'll go over to our formatting options and now we can choose all cells showing revenue values. If we choose that, again our grand total rows and columns uh, will be included here. So of course we have all these cells highlighted in the grand total row and columns. We probably don't want that, so we'll go back here and change this again to all cells for product and quarter, and then that will highlight our cells uh, for the product rows and the quarters. Now this is highlighting top 10 for the product rows, which are actually a subtotal row. So that would be this product one here would be the subtotal of these three cells, or the total of those three cells, and that's actually a subtotal, and that's where this is being applied. So what if we wanted the top 10 at our lower level here for the regions? Well, to do that, uh, we can just first select this cell before we apply the conditional formatting. Or in this case, if we've already applied the conditional formatting, we can again go back to the manager here, conditional formatting, manage rules, and we'll edit this rule. And then right up here where we have this apply rule two and we have cell B6, uh, this is actually uh, currently selected or has focus set to it. So we can go uh, select another cell. So if we select cell B7 here, that's going to change where this is applied to. This is actually the text changes here to region and quarter. If I select uh, cell B6 again, you'll see this change right here when I do that. So I'll select that cell and then that changes to product and quarter. But if we wanted the region and quarter, we can select this cell here, B7, and then we'll go ahead and hit OK, 
and then we can hit OK again or apply. And now we'll see that our top 10 items have been highlighted for the region within each product field or within each product. And another nice feature is that the pivot table remembers the fields that the conditional formatting is applied to. So even, even if we change the layout here of the pivot table, let's say we just move the region above the product in the rows area, that'll of course change the layout here, the look of the pivot table, and we can see that that conditional formatting is still applied to the region field. It's now at the subtotal level, but it's still being applied to that region field. And it would also still be applied even if we removed the product field. Now, if we remove a field that's included in the conditional formatting, like if we were to remove the region field altogether, that's going to delete the conditional formatting. Even if we go back to the conditional formatting uh, manager here, we can see that we now have no rules in uh, this pivot table. So that completely deleted that when we removed any field that's included in the conditional formatting. So that's just good to know when you're moving your pivot table around or uh, analyzing data or kind of exploring your data, you might want to make a copy of that sheet first. Once you apply the uh, conditional formatting like we have on our uh, pivot table here, just left click and hold the sheet, hold down the control key and drag it over to the right. That'll make a copy of your sheet. And then you can go use this sheet to do your exploration and not mess up uh, the previous sheet. And then I also had a few other examples here where you might want to include the total row or the grand total row. In this case here, I have some icons applied to uh, this variance column. And I've also included that icon here in, in the grand total row. Uh, so if we go look at the conditional formatting here, manage rules, uh, edit this rule, uh, we can see that this is being applied to all cells showing variance values. So that includes the grand total row. And in this case, that makes sense because we have a variance percentage here for our grand totals as well. And we might want to see that and have an icon for it. A place where you might not want to use it is on these data bars. Uh, these data bars here, uh, in this case, I've just repeated the value. So I've put the uh, revenue field in the values area again a second time, change the name of it to bar. And then if we go here, uh, manage rules, and edit this rule. Uh, this is a data bar. And in this case, I'm just putting it or applying it to the cells showing bar values for the product only. If we were to include it, and I'll just quickly show this uh, and apply that here. If we include the total row, or I'm sorry, the grand total row, then this bar is going to be really large because it's just showing the value for the grand total row and all the other bars get smaller. So it's harder to make comparisons here and it doesn't really make sense against the grand total row. So hopefully that helps you apply conditional formatting to your pivot tables. Very powerful feature here. They can really bring some life to our pivot tables and make them easier to read and understand. I recommend practicing this. So I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can download this file and check it out. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.